Hello! So this is going to be the second part of a series of videos that I'm going over the whole process of making a concrete statue. Here I have the basic things you need to do latex molding, starting with the Laguna water-based liquid latex. I have my safety glasses here and my paintbrush which needs to be disposable because the latex will destroy anything it touches. And I also have my mask. So this latex has a warning right on it. You don't want to breathe the fumes coming off of it. It's important to wear your safety gear. You don't want any accidents. So these are pretty much the things you need to get started with the first part of latex molding. I can't really stress enough how important it is that you do have your safety gear for any kind of chemical work. It is just not a good idea to risk it. So the disposable brush is important because when the liquid latex hardens it turns to rubber and it will destroy the bristles. You can also cut the brush if you want a stiffer bristle depending on what you're molding. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the latex I use. I use Laguna liquid latex. It is water based which is the best in my opinion because you can actually thin it with water if you want it to be a little runnier. So the thicker the latex, the less coats you need. And you're gonna probably have to play it by ear and some little bit of experience and trial and error with the latex and how many coats each piece will take. Again, this is not like the kind of latex that you would use for movie makeup. This has chemicals in it, you don't want it on your skin, and you don't want to breathe it. I'm gonna open it up here so you can see what it looks like. It's just kind of a really, really thick, um, gelatinous kind of consistency. There are a lot of different kinds of liquid latex rubbers out there. I like the Laguna brand. I think it's a higher quality. I'm pretty sure even Hobby Lobby carries a small container of liquid latex. I'm not sure the brand. They're all pretty similar. It just takes a little bit of trial and error to decide what works best for you. Some important notes about liquid latex is, is it's a fairly expensive product, so you're going to want to be careful on how you handle it. For instance, in the liquid form, if it freezes, it will destroy your latex. So you absolutely do not want to store this outside if the weather is below freezing. And that also includes shipping, and there are some companies that won't even ship it in the wintertime because freezing will destroy it. So the best way to store it is in a room temperature dark place. Another problem with latex is that sunlight degrades it. Now I'm not sure about the difference between the sunlight versus liquid and when it is in its solid form, but I basically just keep the sunlight off of it at all times. It will degrade the rubber once it's in the solid form. So I just kind of assume it's not good for it in the liquid form either. Now with the freezing though, once the latex is cured completely, it's not going to hurt it to leave it outside in freezing temperatures. It might make the rubber a little stiff, but once it warms back up, it's not a problem. The last thing when it comes to latex is petroleum products. Latex, rubbers, and petroleum products don't mix. They will degrade the rubber latex over time, so it's just a good idea not to use them. Alright, so it's time to get started with the latex. Here's my little snail. Um, he's leather hard. He's actually past the leather hard stage now. He's got a good consistency to him where he's just not going to break really easily or squish really easily. I usually kind of just give my pieces a once over with a brush, make sure there aren't any little carvings, um, make sure I didn't miss anything that I want to do quick fixes on. Now because this is a liquid latex rubber, there's not a problem with there being moisture in the clay. There are some rubbers that do not mix with water and therefore you cannot use a ceramics clay with them. So you just kind of need to have an idea of what you're using and what you're putting it on. So this little guy looks pretty good. It's important to remember that when you're doing um, painting on the latex, you really want to get the detail in there. So don't be afraid to be a little rough with it. Of course you don't want to like break pieces off of the clay, but you really want to get that detail. So you want to get the latex in all of the nooks and crannies. And you also want to make sure that you get a solid coat all over the piece. Make sure there are no holes or areas underneath wherever that you may not have gotten latex. The first coat of latex is the most important when you're mold molding a piece. You want to make sure that, especially like in the eyes and a lot of the small detail, that, that you don't have air bubbles or spaces in there. So really kind of brush that latex into the texture. 
This latex has a bit of a thick consistency. Now I could have added water and thinned it out a little bit, which is fine. Um, I figured it'd be okay because he's a pretty solid piece and so I'm just kind of scrubbing that latex into the detail. But if you're using a water-based latex, you can thin it out with a little bit of water. Don't go too crazy, but sometimes that'll help get it into the detail. So liquid latex is a pretty interesting substance. It's going to take several layers coated one after another, but you have to wait for them to dry. Each layer has to dry. It's about a two hour drying time, but it also depends on how thick you've put it on. And I've had coats from anywhere from five coats to 15 coats. So it really depends on how thick your latex is and what kind of latex you're using. So for this little guy, I'm probably going to shoot for around like eight or nine coats. This would be, of course, coat number one. And once he's completely covered with the first coat of latex, I will let him dry or for the latex coat to cure for about two hours. And I usually just keep a little note of paper to say how many coats that I have on him. And you definitely want to keep track. It's too hard to remember how many coats you've put on a piece. You want to definitely make sure your bottom layer is cured before you put another layer of latex on because it can cause problems if the it's not cured and you just keep adding layers. But all in all, it's pretty forgiving. I've done a lot of latex where I've put it on too thick or it's not quite thick enough and it's worked out just fine. You can also speed up the curing time with latex with a, you could do like a heat gun. I usually just use a hair dryer. I'm not sure I've ever actually used like a professional heat gun, but that will speed up the drying time by warming it up. And I've never had any trouble doing that with a ceramic clay underneath, but I have had trouble with the plasticine clay because it is oil based when you heat it up, it squishes and deforms. And so I was warming the latex on the outer coats and I deformed the piece underneath and it wasn't totally noticeable, but it was enough that it bothered me. All right, so that's looking pretty good. You basically just want to make sure that you didn't miss anything, you know, make sure all the underhangs and stuff and are well latexed there's no missing places um, and you don't want to overwork if it starts to dry it'll pull it back up so you know just do one coat make sure it's well covered and move on so that's looking pretty good he just needs to sit until this top layer is cured right it's been sitting for a little over two hours now you can definitely see a change in the coloration of the latex it's kind of this darker yellow antique color versus the lighter beige now that the latex is set up a little bit, you can see the clay underneath. It's a very thin layer. And at this stage, you should be able to touch it without any latex coming off or moving around substantially. And try to avoid latex building up in places like corners or underhangs and that sort of thing because it will not set up properly if you have a bunch of latex in one place. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next coat of latex here. You just want a nice even coat. It's easier now that the first coat's done. I don't have to focus as much in making sure that it's getting in the detail. You're just really going to just make sure that you have even layered coats every two hours. One more thing I want to mention is you want to make sure you have a decent amount of latex around your piece because that's going to make a difference once it's inverted and filled. So I'm going to continue to put the layers of latex on this piece until I reach desired thickness. You can usually tell just by looking at it that it's a good thickness. You know, you're not going to see any of the base piece underneath it. You can also lift up the side of the latex and see how thick it is. The goal here is really just to have nice, even layers of latex over the piece. Once the piece is the thickness you want, the next step is polyvinyl alcohol. This is just a substance that keeps the resin from sticking to the latex. Now the latex needs to cure for three days before you do this step. It needs a good three days or maybe even four days for it to completely cure after the last coat. PVA is pretty common. I got this from just a local store that does fiberglass work. The mother mold is created out of fiberglass resin and this just keeps the resin from sticking to the latex. So I'm going to brush on a coat here over the snail just fairly even it just takes a little bit to dry you do want it dry before you start your mother mold once you have a nice even coat of the pva on the piece making sure to get around on the edges too the next step is going to be a tin foil tape which is going to separate the mold in half i'll explain more about this when i get to the fiberglass resin step but i'm basically making a seam in the mother mold 
Here's the piece after the PVA has dried. I have my tin foil tape here. The reason I use tin foil tape is because the fiberglass resin doesn't really stick to tin foil. There are different ways of doing this, I just think the tape is the easiest. So here in the piece you can kind of tell just by touching how thick this latex is, but you can also lift the side up here and really get an idea for how thick it is, and I can tell that it's plenty thick enough to continue on with the piece. So the general idea of a mother mold is it just needs to hold the latex in place. The latex holds all the detail, but it's really flexible and it stretches, and therefore if you just were to fill it, it would stretch out and possibly warp the shape of your piece. So the mother mold is needed to keep the original latex form in place. Now because whatever you're putting in this is going to be rigid, if there's any underhangs like this shell right here, when you go to pull the mother mold off, it's going to hang up on it. So that's why it needs to be separated out. So basically, with this design, I'm just going to cut it right down the center here. So there's going to be two parts to this mother mold, one on one side and one on the other side when you pull it off. That way there are no underhangs and it comes off clean and smooth. So here I'm marking where I'm going to have the seam in my mother mold. The shapes and types of your mother molds is going to completely depend on what the underneath base shape looks like. If you have a really flat shape, you won't even need to split the mold, it won't be a problem. But for this little snail, it's going to be, have to be cut in half on the outside. So I'm going to take some of my aluminum foil tape and I'm basically just going to make a seam on the outside where I drew my line. And this is going to be the separation of the mother mold. Now I'm going to continue to add the tin foil tape until I have a separation of tin foil all the way down the middle of this piece on my line. This will be the last step before fiberglass resin. So I'm going to continue to add my tape and then I'm going to go over the steps for the prepping for the fiberglass and mixing your resin. And here it is, all finished with the tin foil. You want to make sure there's not a lot of gaps under the tin foil where the resin might get in and cause problems, but basically you get the idea. It's the separation wall between the two halves of the snail which is evenly placed. You want to give it one last look over, make sure there's enough tin foil space to make a good outer mother mold, and then we'll move on to fiberglass resin. Okay, so I'm outside and ready to do the next step, which is the fiberglass resin. You're going to want to do this outside because these chemicals are nasty and you don't want to be in close quarters. I have all my equipment here, my pipe, and this is some gloves and my mask. This is the fiberglass resin. It needs to be cut into squares before it's used, and this is the fiberglass and the hardener. Of course I have my piece and some other equipment that I need, you know, just the cup to put the resin in and whatnot. Once you put the hardener in the fiberglass, you don't have a lot of time, so you want to make sure all your equipment's out here first before you start mixing. This is my little mixing cup. And you also want to use a disposable brush for this because, again, it's going to ruin any paintbrush you use. Before I start putting the resin on the glass, I need to make sure that my mold is going to have legs. I just use this cheap plastic pipe and I cut it with these cutters to make legs. For my pieces, they will be turned upside down and when they do, they're not going to stand right. So you need to put legs on them. You're going to want to probably do like a triangle type shape with this sort of shape. So I'll do two legs in the front and then I'll leave the back open, which will be the third leg. I have everything ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and mix the resin with the hardener. I have a little bit of resin left here. You're going to just want to add your hardener based on what the directions are for your resin. It's not overly difficult. If you add too much hardener, it's going to set up more quickly. If you don't add enough, it's not going to set up. Make sure you mix in the hardener well. You want it completely mixed in or you're going to have splotches or spaces that will not harden. Now that it's mixed, I'm going to take my fiberglass piece and I'm just going to add the resin to it and start adding it to the piece. It doesn't matter what kind of fiberglass you use, I've used both woven and matte and they both work fine. I'm using the woven here and so I'm going to do two solid coats of woven on each side of the snail to build up the strength. The more glass you add, the stronger it's going to be. These pieces, or the most of the pieces I make, are pretty small and they just don't need to be more than two layers thick. Now you can get the fiberglass and the resin pretty much anywhere, including Walmart or any of the hardware stores. It's not overly expensive, but you do need to make sure you have your safety gear too, because this stuff is really bad for you. 
I'm just going to continue to add the resin to my fiberglass sheets and add it to each side of the snail, making sure that I'm building up the edges where I'm going to be putting the two halves of the mold together. And you can use bolts or clamps to do that. I use bolts. So you're going to want some sort of thickness and strength on that side so that when you pry it apart, it doesn't just break. So make sure you're reinforcing your edges and the bottom of the piece and a good two layers thick of your fiberglass. I have two layers of fiberglass and resin on each side. It is time to put the legs on and I just attach them with long pieces of fiberglass resin. Make sure you have a little bit of reinforcement on the legs, otherwise they might take damage when you're filling the mold and I pick them up by the legs and they get a lot of abuse. So make sure to reinforce them. All right, it's all set. I'm going to leave this to harden up. The time for hardening varies depending on the temperature outside and how much hardener you put in your resin. So I'm just going to leave this out here for a few hours and come back and check on it. And when it's set up, it's time for the next step, which would be drilling the holes and trimming the edges. So here I am with the drill, getting ready to drill some holes in this mother mold. This is a pretty small mold, so I don't think I'm going to need more than three holes. You always want to do holes towards the base of the piece and then one at the top here. Now you can use clamps and other things to keep your mother mold together, but I find drilling holes and just using bolts works e the best and it's the easiest. So I'm going to start with my top hole and I'm going to drill this one out. Definitely wear your safety glasses while you're doing this and it's not even a bad idea to have a mask of some kind because it makes little fiberglass particles. All right, now I'm going to drill. You kind of want it as close as the piece and as close to the bottom of the piece as you can get without damaging the rubber. Now, if you've ever worked with fiberglass before, you know that if you get it on you, it's very itchy and irritating. So just be aware of that. Be careful while you're working with it and try to clean up as best you can. This is the last hole I'm gonna drill and that's gonna be the front bottom hole for this mother mold. All right, now that all the holes are drilled, the next step is going to be cutting the edge of the fiberglass. Now I do this with tin snips because my fiberglass isn't too thick. But if your fiberglass is thick, a tin snip is not going to cut through it and you'll have to use something like a jigsaw or a sawzaw. So I'm basically going to clip around this entire edge of the piece until both sides are even. I don't want any fiberglass above this tin foil line where they're going to stick together and it'll be a problem when I pry it apart. So I'm going to clip all along the edge of this mother mold. Some pieces may be harder than others, but I pretty much just want a line that goes across that's fairly straight and even looking. I'm not overly careful about how my molds look once they're done. I just need them to serve a purpose. You know, you can make clean them up and make them look more professional if you just spent more time with them. I don't do that, I just need it to serve a purpose and so I basically just make it look or work until it's functional and then that's all I do. So I am just have this last back half to clip down and then I'm going to start prying the two halves apart. Now the PVA, which is the green stuff you put on it to keep the resin from sticking to the latex, it is water soluble. So if your pieces won't come apart, you can like spray water in there, kind of pry it a little open um, and that will help them pry off. All in all, it can be a little bit tricky getting the two halves or three halves or however your mold is split up off of the latex underneath. Now that I have it clipped all the way around, I also need to pry it up from the base part, which is on the tile. The fiberglass and resin can stick to the tile, and so it's good to just kind of get underneath it and pull it up, and then it'll come off easier from the two halves. There's really no wrong way to do this as long as you don't damage the piece underneath. You just need to get the two halves apart, make sure there's no fiberglass touching each other, like cementing it either to the tile or to each other in the piece, and then just force the two halves apart. And sometimes it takes quite a bit of force to do so. I'm getting pretty close to these two halves coming loose, and there you go. You see one side for the snail, and the other side has the tin foil on, which I'm just gonna take off. And that'll go into the trash. So I have here my two halves of my mother mold. I'm going to take off any excess tin foil that's loose. If it's not loose and it's submitted in there, just leave it be, it'll be fine. 
And there it is. At this stage, it's pretty close to being done. I'm gonna go ahead and take the piece off the tile now and take the clay out of it. The latex rubber has sat for more than three days now, so it's plenty cured. You don't really have to worry about it being too stretchy or will break on you, it shouldn't. I'm just gonna remove the clay piece underneath. It doesn't really matter if the piece underneath breaks apart, sometimes they do. I don't fire any of the pieces that I use, I just make molds, so it doesn't really matter to me if the piece underneath does get destroyed. But since this is a pretty solid piece, it comes out without any pieces coming off or breaking. And there's a little snail. The mold looks good. I don't see any bubbles or any missed places on my first coat. It's nice and thick, which is fine, and it's all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim the edges of the latex now, and then I'm gonna go to the legs of the mold and work on them. It really doesn't matter how much of this you trim, you need just a little bit of a, an edge on the latex, so you know you don't want it too close. About an inch or half an inch would be good. And uh, cutting the latex doesn't affect it. It's not going to like cause tears or rips, which will increase. Um, it's pretty durable stuff. I also usually just run the latex rubber part of the mold underwater too to kind of get that PVA off of it and get the clay out of it. I didn't show it in the video, but I did do that with this piece after the final step. Here again is the inside of the mold. It looks pretty good. Um, you can see the texture. There's a little bit of an edge here. I'm not too worried about it. It's not bad enough, but if it is really, if there's too much of an edge there, you can clip it. And again, that's not going to hurt your mold as long as you don't clip through it accidentally. You just want to, if there's too much of a lip there, you can clip it off. And that's just from my piece not being cemented to the board when I put the latex on it. Got underneath the piece on the edges there. So yeah, it's pretty much finished now. All I need to do is level out the legs and uh, do some final cleanup on my mold here. Take off any excess tin foil um, or any other particles or whatever that can come off. And just try and kind of clean it up a little bit. It's not a bad idea to do all of these steps wearing gloves of any kind, um, even just like latex gloves to kind of protect your hands from any fiberglass and that sort of thing because it can be an irritant. So my mold's looking good, two halves fit well. The edge here still needs to be trimmed with the tin snips. So I'm just gonna run the tin snips around the bottom edge of the piece and trim it. Um, it's really not any different than the first part of the mother mold. And then after it's all trimmed and I have all the excess pieces off, I'm going to go ahead and bolt it back together. So I'm just going to take three bolts and I'm going to place them in the three holes that are drilled into the mother mold. You just need to make sure that the bolts you use fit into the size of the drill that you use to make the holes in the mother mold in the first place. Alright, and once the bolts are finished, the final part is to level off the legs to make this mold stand when it's upside down, which is how it's filled. So I just use a little level and a marker, and um, this back piece is where it's going to sit on the back, and then it's got the two legs in the front, which makes three points that it's going to be sitting on the ground. So I just make sure it's level, and then I mark off on the pipe where I want the line to be cut. This step's pretty important because you want your mold as level as possible when you turn it over and fill it. If it's too high or too low on one side, then whatever you're filling it with is going to want to, of course, lean to that side. Which can make a kind of crooked looking piece once it's pulled out of the mold. So to cut the pipe, I'm gonna use my pipe cutters. You can get them from any hardware store. They're really easy to use and I highly re recommend them for any kind of projects that you're using pipe with. I'm gonna try and cut it as straight as I can by lining it up on the top part of this line and then you're gonna score it a little and then just turn while you squeeze and the knife cuts through the pipe pretty easily. This is the last step for the mold. Once the mold pipe legs are cut, it's pretty much ready to fill at that point. Now you can use whatever you want for the legs of your mold. I have used other things like pieces of wood or just kind of whatever I had. This pipe works the easiest and it's the cheapest thing just to have on hand and that's why I use it primarily. 
Okay, so that's the last leg cut, and I'm gonna flip it over and see how straight it is. Looks good. You can see how even it is. It's touching on the back part of the mold, and then the uh, pipe is the two front legs. So it's got three points of contact on the ground there. And that is it. The mold is all finished. It's bolted up and ready to go. It's nice and even when I flip it upside down and ready for something to be poured, which I usually pour plaster for my first piece, but it just depends on what I'm doing with it. And the reason I do plaster is I usually keep an original of my piece and then that can be molded again if the mold breaks or gets damaged, which over time eventually they will if, you, if they have enough use. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was pretty much what I go through and all the steps for mold making for my concrete statues. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks.